we have all had the classic autocorrect miscommunication, right? So someone types something, they don't look it over, it's autocorrected to something like maybe close but off. They send it, they get distracted, they don't come back to the conversation immediately. Yesterday I received a text like that where I was like, wow. And so the way that I am, that I've been since I am young, is if you give me the littlest like little tip on the cap of an acorn, um, by the time I see you again, there's like a beautiful billowing five acre oak forest behind me, where have I imbued this with meaning, I've given it a mythology, I may be defensive, I might be angry and not even acknowledge it, my feelings are hurt, I feel five years old, I might feel rejected. And in previous, I would even say months, I'd stuff it and be like, no, I'm fine, it's good, it's silly, it's not worth you know diving into. That's the old passive aggressive way. And, and what happens when you stuff that down, you know it comes out in different ways, usually either against yourself or the person that you are having the conversation with. So at the end of the day, I wasn't sure that I even wanted to talk to them. And they had the foresight to not just call me, but FaceTime me. And I will tell you, in this day and age of electronic communication, where a lot of things can be misconstrued, even if there's not an autocorrect, there is something to be said for looking at someone electronically, true, but looking at someone's face and looking at the context in which they meant to say it. Tone has, you lose tone on text. We all know this. Things can sound that you mean lightheartedly that sound like a little bit asshole-ish. And things that are, you might say something that you feel bold enough to be cool on the phone that you would never say face-to-face, -face, keyboard cowboys. So what comes up for me today is I very easily could have been like, no, I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to stew on it like I'm a six-year-old brat. And so what I did, now they happened to call me, but uh, what I'm going to say is if they didn't call me, I would have called them. And I'll tell you why. Because if you are searching for the truth and you are on this journey to really be honest with yourself and keep on covering the lies you tell yourself and really understand your pathology and love yourself to wholeness, you have to go after the conversations that don't feel finished to you. You owe it to your truth telling to connect and have an uncomfortable conversation because keeping your side of it, listen, if they meant it cruelly, that's their problem. But you've got to keep your side of the street clean because that festering oak forest is not going to help you tell the truth. It's going to allow you to escape even deeper into a narrative that isn't true, that has been invented that it's probably a defensive ego walling up. So what I offer today and what absolutely occurred for me, and then of course in the conversation we laughed hysterically and he explained like that is the opposite of what he meant. And I kind of knew that, but we're human. and Our, our emotions take over. So if you are in a bit of a situation of miscommunication, it is your responsibility to clear the air. It is not their perceived wrong responsibility to reach out for you. You have to take the bigger hand and make sure that you are telling your truth and you're understanding what they mean, whether you believe that that's with cruel intent or not. So that is what has come up for me today. And I will see you tomorrow.